Paradigm, theory, conceptual framework, theoretical framework. Research can sometimes feel like navigating a complex labyrinth of terms and concepts. And for PhD students, especially those who are new to the research field, this can feel quite daunting, quite intimidating, and it can bring on a bout of imposter syndrome. So it can be useful to get your head around some of this terminology to give your confidence a little boost. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through each of the terms I've just mentioned, paradigm, theory, conceptual framework, theoretical framework. I'm gonna explain what they mean, how they relate to each other, and I'm going to give you some examples so it doesn't feel massively abstract. Because that's another thing, isn't it, about academia at this level. Sometimes these things can feel quite intangible, quite fluffy, quite abstract. If we've not met before, hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley, and here on my YouTube channel, Degree Doctor, I help PhD students get out of their own way and get that thesis done. Now, anyone who's spent time in academia knows that academics love their jargon. Blah, 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 blah. They're big, intimidating words and terms. Some of which can be super confusing and easily mixed up, like conceptual framework and theoretical framework, theory and paradigm. So let's get super clear on what these things are and what they mean. First up, research paradigm. Paradigm is the broadest term we're going to look at in this video. It refers to an overarching framework or a worldview, which essentially guides how a researcher goes about doing their study. A paradigm encompasses what the researcher sees when they look at the social world, ontology, how they go about studying that social world, epistemology, and the tools and techniques they use to gather that knowledge, methodology. So essentially, a paradigm is the big picture. It shapes how researchers views the world and in turn, how they go about researching that world. Think of a paradigm like a lens through which you're looking at your research topic. The lens you choose is going to affect things like how you ask questions, what you consider to be valid evidence, and how you interpret your findings. For example, if you identify with a positivist paradigm, you might approach your research with the belief that there is an objective reality out there. The social world just is how it is. It's kind of the same for everyone. It's just there, it just exists, you can measure it, you can study it, you can quantify it. On the other hand, if you see yourself more as an interpretivist, you might believe that actually there isn't one hard fixed reality. The social world looks and feels different to everyone. So you might want to focus on understanding those subjective meanings that people attach to their lived experiences of the world. Let's take a look at an example. Say you're doing a study about young people's friendships that they form through part-time work. If you take a positivist approach, you might analyse the frequency or the number of interactions between co-workers and analyse whether those interactions correlate with job satisfaction or productivity. If you take an interpretivist approach, you might conduct some in-depth interviews with young people to see what those friendships, what those relationships mean to them. Next up, theory. Moving one step down from paradigms, we have theory. A theory is a set of concepts and propositions that explain how and why certain phenomena occur. So to put that simply, theories are ways of explaining why things happen and what might happen. They provide ways of explaining events, behaviours and situations by identifying relationships between the things that are involved. In other words, theory offers us an explanation. It helps us answer that question, why? Theories can be broad, they can be specific, they can be macro, micro, meso. So there are different levels of them. And I recently made a video in which I was talking about the different levels of theory. So I will link to that on screen right now. So to go back to our example study of young people's friendships at work, you might use social exchange theory to look at how those friendships are formed. That theory suggests that people form relationships based on weighing up the costs and benefits of getting into those relationships. You could investigate whether young people are more likely to form friendships with co-workers when the benefits outweigh the costs. For example, emotional support and camaraderie versus time and effort. So that would just be one theory through which you can interpret your findings and draw conclusions. Before we get onto conceptual frameworks, I wanna hear from you in the comments. I'm really interested in what theories you're applying or thinking about applying in your research, and if there's anything you're stuck on or don't understand about them. What theories are you using and what are you struggling with when it comes to theory? I'd love to know, I'd love to answer your questions, I'd love to make some videos about those very things, so get typing. 
Let's get onto conceptual frameworks now. So what is a conceptual framework? A conceptual framework is a structure that helps you organize and connect the different concepts in your research. It helps you think about how those different concepts or variables are related to each other or might be related to each other. And this can be quite helpful for clarifying your research questions or your hypotheses. Now, I feel a bit abstract here, so let's get into the example. For our study on young people's friendships at work, you might develop a conceptual framework that includes things like this. Peer support, workplace satisfaction, shift patterns, length of employment. You could map out how those concepts are related based on the literature you've read and use that framework to guide your data collection and analysis. For instance, you might hypothesize that peer support leads to higher workplace satisfaction with reciprocity as the underlying mechanism which could link to the social exchange theory that we looked at earlier. Next up, theoretical framework. A theoretical framework is closely linked to a conceptual framework, but it's more specifically focused on the theories that underpin your research. Whilst a conceptual framework might include a broad range of concepts and variables, a theoretical framework explicitly identifies particular theories that are going to guide your research. Theoretical frameworks help you position your research within the broader academic literature. They show how your study is grounded in the existing knowledge and the contribution that it's going to make to that knowledge. A well-defined theoretical framework can help ensure that your research is understood in the context of the other research that's out there. It helps you identify where your research sits in relation to other people's research. So in our study of young people's friendships at work, your theoretical framework might be grounded in social exchange theory and in attachment theory. So you might draw on social exchange theory to explain why particular friendships develop at work, whilst attachment theory focuses on the bonds that develop between the co-workers. I hope that's cleared things up and you feel a bit more confident around these terms and concepts now. Popping up on your screen right now is a video I think you'll be interested in if you want to explore that difference between conceptual and theoretical frameworks in a bit more depth. And this is really important because conceptual and theoretical frameworks are one of the most common things that I see PhD students get really mixed up about. So if that's something you want to check out, give this a click and I'll see you over there.